Welcome everyone to today's live stream, a uh, restreaming of a recently failed live stream regarding writing a MIPS disassembler. I thought it's too interesting not to try to recapture and re-speak this here a little bit more proper because other live stream was interrupted by failing Wi-Fi. So what was this about? I did this vintage retro VGA stuff, S3 Verge and Voodoo for direct bare metal low level programming, mostly with DOS, but also theoretically Linux, Xorg, and certainly our, well, your own hobby kernel game demo or our micro kernel vision here. And um, with all this research surrounding the S3 Verge and Voodoo, I also came across here this Verite or Edition Verite, not really sure if. Back in the day we knew this, maybe not magazines and internet were both limited as uh, in school and such you didn't just spend all your pocket money on all the latest magazines and whatnot. So I may not, might not really have known about this one, but uh, so this is rendition Verite, you see this also on Wikipedia certainly and we had this shortly in the other IT news of the other week in regards to the story behind there, I shortly mentioned this somewhere in the context of latest AMD or NVIDIA silicon or something. And here's the story. You can read this. So it was not totally super amazing. I think it was way faster than S3 Verge, but sometimes not as amazing as Voodoo. I would probably summarize it. And they are also right here. The first generation silicon apparently was a little bit buggy or something like that. You can read the full details there. So what is interesting is when I read over this, maybe even in this story of, it was mentioned here MIPS like CPU. So uh, this based on a lone MIPS CPU, was it here? Do they speak about this or? Anyway, uh, this is reoccurring. You find this also elsewhere. For example, on Wikipedia, they probably write your risk course. So what makes this so special? In, in a way, this was the very first fully flexible programmable GPU because the other ones were fixed functions. So of course, VGA didn't have any acceleration. The regular CGA, EGA, VGA card, no bit BLT, no sprites, no nothing, only a mostly dumb frame buffer. And then of course, the 2D accelerators for Windows stuff, of course, bit BLT, fill and lines, we have done this as well. And this one here, so uh, the Verge and the Voodoo both were fixed function. You could program there your triangles or lines and have them rasterized. Of course, both would do shaded and textured triangles, both the Verge and the Voodoo. Of course, the Verge more known for deaccelerator. And again, if you're interested in this, we made videos about this, how to really program this low level as well as the Voodoo. And I monitor eBay and I might be able to finally source one, cross your fingers that it arrives here maybe for not too much because you know I usually monitor eBay for a year and as there was, uh, because these cards they are rare, they only appear on eBay like once a month and then they go for 100 or 150 dollar and so much I don't want to spend for this. So what makes this very special? This is not a very fixed function accelerator like the Verge or the Voodoo, but it has this risk core and some articles write it's like MIPS like and um, MIPS like or risk and something. So you have a real CPU, a flexible general purpose kind of sort of GPU in there. And this makes it in also maybe this opinion here, GP, GPU or something. Um, anyway, I think he mentions this also somewhere. And um, of course, when I look on eBay and I'm interested in getting this card just for the collection and fun and sake of it, I Google for the data sheet and I found one on one of the museum sites here. You can find this as V2200 spec PDF. And I was scrolling over this technical specification, including risk programming. Yay, risk programming, that's what we are here for. So I was scrolling last week and my recurring theme here, other people play Tetris or Zodoku or other fruit ninja stuff. I just write when I'm somewhere traveling or something and 
want to have some mind game, I read some specification and write some code against them. And here you see this risk processor. Let's zoom in a little bit for you following along at home. And 32 interlocked integer processors. Interlocked probably also comes where this MIPS like comes from. Single world, word multiple operation, yada yada, something linear. And by the way, it takes that linear 32 bit address space like uh, you only have with 386 and such upwards and yeah, multiply and so on. And of course, so this is running at 25 or so megahertz or maybe later versions with 40 or 50 megahertz. It's not super amazing, uh, extremely super mega fast. But again, it is only the front end to drive a additional fixed function texture unit and such. So you only use this to do triangle setup or even maybe word transform theoretically. So it was, in my opinion, not a bad idea. And I really wish in a, so to speak, Star Trek Next, Star Trek Next Generation parallel universe where this would have been more successful. Maybe we would have had more flexible general purpose programmable GPUs way earlier instead of this fixed function race that occurred then with AMD and NVIDIA. Um, I hope, by the way, we are streaming. And uh, so taking a look on this, this looks super easy. And uh, also recurring theme, I went over the risk instruction, uh, risk five instruction set here recently on a live stream. If you are interested in the latest and greatest open source, we also took a look on this and I came away mostly impressed. Um, for those details, you can watch that video specifically. And it is not too unlikely even to that because all the risk, of course, share some common principles like load store and so on. And you also see here um, 32. Well, of course, uh, this example not the best. This has, has also compressed instruction, but otherwise 32 bit instruction. And um, this is what you also find here. Of course, you have very many registers. Oh, by the way, so this risk five has really many registers. 32, these are really many. Of course, x86 only had like, uh, I don't know, something like eight if you count all the index and stack, uh, segment and index and whatnot. And so 32 registers, really many also, of course, as so often in RISC, re register zero is also hardwired to zero. So no matter what you write and read in there, this is always zero. That is very often the case in MIPS and Spark also. And then here, of course, instructions. And I show you this. So the rest of RISC V, you can watch the other video. But comparing this to our uh, discovered here rendition verity. So what is different? So first of all, this is even more simple. In that this is all 8 bit bytes, so source 1, source 2, destination, and the opcode. Really super simple. What this means also is that, wait a second, 8 bit for the source and destination. That means 256 registers. Hmm. And also opcodes, so this also means only 256 opcodes. Of course, RISC 5 has really many more opcodes because they have here, although they only have like 7-bit opcodes, this extends here to function 3 and function 7 and stuff like this. So all in all, this is a really much larger opcode space there. So with this rendition verite, um, yeah, also we can compare this to MIPS. There is a MIPS either. Uh, this is similar. There you see, by the way, how similar this is. I probably should have scrolled to wherever that is. Anyway, this is yeah, amazing preparation. Ah, here is some examples. So you see here six, five bits and so on. Um, destination source and so on. Very uh, similar, just of course more instructions because usually for really full blown GPU you need way more instructions. And um, going back to our specification here, so Super simple and a little bit strange. And how strange this is, you see here. Okay, we have a little bit more. Okay, fine. Some branch is opcode and offset, but um, basically this still stands. But here we come to the point that 8 bit for the register, yes, this means this GPU has 256 registers, which is really crazy many, especially if you're coming from x86, from Intel. And um, some they label here already like frame pointer, link, program link register, interrupt link register, stack pointer. So this is how they usually should be used. Then you see a register 128 to 251 
general purpose registers, yes, this is nearly 128, so this is basically like 120 general purpose registers, really, really many. But of course, we are not running an operating system on there on a general purpose operating system. This would be forbiddable expensive because for task switching, the operating system would have to save 256 times 32 bit words plus maybe even more so. Um, this of course is only usable on a GPU and it becomes stranger because you have seen the RISC processors usually have register zero hardwired to zero. This GPU has many of these registers hardwired to fancy masks. Constants, writes are ignored. So you see 57 is a mask. So this basically really many of those are a mask. Some even very special 3D clip code registers here, 38 for example. And then even way more constants. Why this constants? Of course, this very specific bit pattern are what you usually need for the RGB here, for example. Um, we have here RGB alpha values here, this FF hex throughout. And of course, zero is zero. Um, and funny enough, register one is also zero. Like why? I have no idea. I would not have done this. I would have used any other, um, but maybe like any other constant, like basically anything else might be have might have been more usable, but maybe they wanted not to have some interlock dependencies and have two times zero. I have no idea. There's even another zero. So you have multiple zero constants for whatever. You need them and again more constants also this is for fixed point floating point and stuff like this and colors and um, coordinates and so on but again although there are really many constants like half are constants but half are also general purpose registers and here come the instructions so this gpu really runs regular add subtract and so on and i show you this also that you see how this is built up similar to risk 5 and mips um, that you understand how GPUs or CPUs really work. And what is interesting is that they have these instructions multiple times. So this in 1996 or so, so in the mid of the 90s, or they certainly started designing this in 1992, 1993, 1994, something like that. Then maybe two years to market or something. And this was already using vector instructions. So inter integer instructions can be scalar, one operation or vectors, suffix V, Two operations, vector operand as one can also be specified scalar. And by the way, NVIDIA take that, give us the bloody specification for us to write amazing open source driver. Of course, this is here leaked documents. Um, I think <clears throat> confidential information that I probably shouldn't show you, but there you have it. And you also find this again, v2200 spec.pf. And um, why is this interesting? I thought this is so much more simple. You have seen Risk Five is much more complex, and it's not so often that you write an assembler from scratch, and that is what I've done the other week in a lunch break and uh, nearly on the beach, so to say, for the recurring viewers who spotted where I was. And um, yeah, so also interesting instructions here. Min minimum value of S one S two. Really interesting instructions. Um, and also sort, this is sorting the uh, upper bits of the smallest values and puts them in segment zero, the middle value in segment one and so on. So, and also by the way, so this is like MIPS um, without interlocking. This means you need to carefully, if you write assembler or a C compiler, but certainly you want to program this in assembler most of the time for the performance, I guess you need to take a delay slots um, into account that is written here somewhere. Uh, vector must be double word. Ah, yeah, also, so vector operands must be double word aligned as so often, and also uh, there is interlocking somewhere. All multiply instructions assigned, blah blah blah. Um, and so on, all scalar instructions uh, take one cycle to launch and have a delay time of one. These are the delay times here, so you cannot, this means you can't use the result in the next operation. For example, you add two values and this might have a delay um, of one 
or this even this seed SR has even a delay of two, then you can for the next two instructions not depend on this value and certainly get garbage. It's certainly like implementation defined, but usually like garbage whatever is processing there through the logic gates in the pipeline. And uh, yeah, so here are the opcodes multiple times for uh, for uh, immediate, uh, scalar immediate, immediate of course meaning an immediate value, they're directly encoded. That works by having the immediate value I think in S1, so all of those is immediate meaning you don't use a register, but for example a value like you multiply something by 8, that is an immediate value of 8 that is included directly in the instruction. And that is then for the immediate encoding here, I think it was S as one directly is a number in the encoding there instead of the register. And yeah, of course, load store instructions as usual per risk as they are reduced instruction set. You don't have this fancy x86 directly in the instruction referencing memory for load and store. This is like usual separated load compute store for much more reduced instruction set computers. And um, yeah, also branch. So this is basically you could write a normal program. Maybe another day in the winter we try to write a own program for this. And um, draw instructions, parallel draw instructions. So this has some very specific GPU specialized instructions to SL write this inner loops of um, a drawing and blending and also here is triangle, so triangle draw instruction. So this I think probably draws a whole triangle or something like that or or one, I, I don't know, I need to read uh, more precisely. Whether this is just one step or if it computes here as a whole, it renders a triangle at the rate of four plus one multiplied by, sp by spans plus one multiplied by pixels. So up to the memory bandwidth limits, note that the chip must be in V2000, so V2000 is the second generation mode. So I think this probably uh, renders a whole triangle as far as I understand this. And um, of course, of well, of course and of course, but there is an X driver for this X -Org driver XF86 video rendition that of course was extra accelerated, so not as usable nowadays with X -Org server having extra acceleration deleted in the server infrastructure. But you have here acceleration and I looked over this and I spotted microcodes. So here is V1000-2D microcode and V2000-2D microcode. Read me pointing to this microcode files included here are this rendition's permission. So you can, and apparently they are included from the following Windows driver. So allegedly according to this readme, readme they came directly out of the Windows driver and we disassemble them now and take a closer look. And when you open them here, because I was, how did I end up writing the disassembler here for this the other day, I clicked on this microcode and spotted ELF. And then I was thinking, wait a second, do they mean this is a, this is in my opinion really uh, specific. And in also if the microcode is not open source, at least distributed as nicely as this, because there you see how amazing companies in the 90s have done their stuff. This is in my opinion top notch. Even if this was not the most outstanding performance silicon, I really like the way it is done and even here this microcode because it's not that often that you find microcode here in an ELF binary. Also you see here this recording pattern. These are the instructions. So 32-bit, uh, 32-bit, 32-bit and this here are knobs in between because the uh, knob encoding here is very specifically also resulting in zeros. We can uh, this because this is an add with immediate, I think. No operation, I think it was somewhere written here in case you're interested. Uh, that is at, or is it not? Hmm. No operation. Anyway, this is add with immediate at i or something, but uh, whatever. Let's take a closer look. I downloaded here the microcode. And um, the first thing you can do here is run read. Don't have it in the history. Read. What have I done? Oh, okay. Caps lock. It's not our friend. So the first thing you can do is read elf-a for all the information that read elf can give you here of that. 
and surprise surprise that gives us here some nice um, ELF32 dump here with all the magic. This is also how all your Unix, all your Linux binaries, uh, certainly maybe even Haiku and such look like executable. This, uh, this machine ID I find really cool. This is really kudos to uh, really creativity and nice naming because 3D32, 3D32 bit, right? Really cool machine encoding. I would have maybe hopefully chosen the same. I really like this kind of coffee hex uh, encodings here. Then you see all the sections. So, and by the way, this is, I find this so amazing, so well done that this is exactly similar how you would have Linux kernel modules, regular uh, shared objects and such with all the text and data, raw data, BSS and so on segment. And um, because this is really cool that this firmware, remember this is firmware from like 1997, 1998, or they maybe started to develop it in 1996 or somewhere around this time frame. And in 20 years later, you have here really nice symbol listings. Take that NVIDIA. This is how it should be done because if someone is doing vintage retro stuff with an NVIDIA card or if they want today for the latest and greatest silicon write a driver, for NVIDIA, yeah, no specification, have fun reverse engineering this. And you, by the way, see how much fun it is reverse engineering all those magic numbers here for the opcodes. So, of course, we see here a lot, but we do not see everything because, of course, read elf and object dump and GCC and bin utils does not have support for just this rendition verity because this is, of course, their very proprietary instruction encoding here. So what does it give us? It gives us here all the symbols, which is already very nice to have. So we know that at offset 1A30 is, for example, some BitBLT420 setup. And they even have here some MPEG acceleration. Again, this is, um, this is 2D. Um, my understanding is I have not yet downloaded games. If I get this card from eBay, I certainly try to get this here to run. My understanding is like a game like VQuake for this very T Quake would have very Quake specific microcode assembly here and load. So when you launch Quake from back in the day, the Quake program would load its specific 3D acceleration microcode into the GPU and run it then. And um, this is why this X server code only has the 2D stuff, but it has funny enough MPEG motion 420 acceleration apparently according to this. Uh, symbol, but it's not used in the X server. So before you get now thrilled to get this card out to watch an MPEG video, it's not wired up in the X driver, but if you're into such kind of tinkering and are inspired here by something. Also, by the way, you could take this like we had in last day's IT news, this people who take risk 5 for GPU setup. I want to uh, educate here and learn and inspire. You certainly can build a massive parallel risk 5 vector setup for a modern GPU if you wanted to. But long story short, we want to get to this disassembly. For this we need the text section here, which is of course not disassembled. Is it even shown here somewhere? Yeah, probably. Um, is it this or is it, was it already? Because of course this tool doesn't know about this. You can dump this here with, with read elf dosh uh, dash x dot text here of this microcode here to the hex file. And then you have here the, also when you can type correctly, not um, too hot here in Berlin today, global warming, not fun. Here we have the text section and now we could either manually look this up. This are here all the instructions. 3, 4, 4, 7, 4, 5, 10. By the way, big, uh, uh, big Endian, much more readable in my opinion. We had this in the source 5, so written as it is written the specification in the normal reading and writing order. You could look this up manually, but this certainly would not be as much fun as writing a disassembler for this, which is what I've done last week just some plain old C, which I slightly re regretted. Why have I done this? Because I'm considering writing a JIT compiler for RISC V and you need to, um, I find it always very good to get into the mood with some easy examples. This was super easy in my opinion. And this is why I've done it 
uh, with a coffee on a beach on Mallorca because that's how we do things here. And um, other people play the doku or uh, stuff and uh, yeah, we write this. This is just some... Um, and why, so why have I done this in low level C? I will most likely bump this up a little bit to C++-ish um, because again, I most likely will try to write a high performance JIT compiler for RISC-V another weekend um, or months certainly more likely. And here again, some I usually like to put some comments here, just some reminder how this is formatted here, some opcode, D, uh, destination, source, and so on. Then I have here some enum. Let me just check how, I uh, hope this is halfway decent readable. And um, so a little bit practicing for myself to get into the mood again. Here's some enum enumeration for the instruction format because we have here multiple of this formats integer, store load, and so on. They are slightly varying here in these fields. We define here this enumeration to differentiate, to conditionalize based on this. And initially I didn't have this, but because I wanted to polish it up a little bit, I also even have here a naming map of these registers, uh, of all of those registers like frame pointer, return address, and so on, stack pointer. A nice naming just for the disassembly to look nicer. Also here with this constants. And I have only filled here, you see here is a huge gap between 252 and 57. The huge gap is there because I just simply print out the number. And if we have a mapping, is this map, if this mapping is not zero initialized, then we print out this pretty name there. And then we also have the instructions. So I copy and paste it here, all the instructions. Of course, usually I start just with one instruction and test this. And then if it starts to work, I add here more and more. So this is in the meantime, I think I copy and pasted all of the instructions from this PDF. So this should probably be a complete disassembler again. So this um, at E here is uh, immediate. You will find this here in this specification in the instruction listing under integer instructions uh, here at E it should be like somewhere like the first that is here immediate at and I guessed here the um, notation because you write here integer instructions can be scalar or vector suffix V uh, and so I think they intend like at V should be at vector or you put a dot there I don't know uh, but maybe then they could have written suffix dot V anyway it doesn't really matter also for vector scalar that is vs, that is what I used here. So you see here at e for immediate, at for regular, and then at vs, uh, at v for vector, at vs for uh, vector scalar. And then basically I copy pasted all of them and I did it so a little bit that you learn something uh, for C and C++. So I, you can, this enumeration, you can assign here random values, whatever you want. And I didn't even need the zero here. By default, this is zero. This is just my uh, take on it to keep this a little bit more readable. And so with this or not, doesn't matter. This integer is zero. I did this specifically so that all this integer instructions, because we have here name and instruction format, um, this enum. And if you don't type here something, so you initialize this here, but uh, these are the register names a little bit further. So you type here this structure and if you don't all those in, in modern compilers, all of those members that you don't type here are zero initialized. So I don't need to type here everywhere in um, integer and I only need to type here like pre whatever that was or branch jump load store for all of those instructions that have this format. Then a rec name lookup function that just looks up here our register names and pretty prints here. Yeah, uh, C sucks, in my opinion, a little bit. In C++ or Lua, that would have been more amazing. In my opinion, in Lua, this would have been amazingly readable. The only reason I've not done this in Lua, although it would have been so much more nicer, is that I wanted this as a base for my next endeavor of high-performance RISC-V uh, just-in-time compiler. This is why I stick here with this C, I will likely extend this again to C with a little bit of C++ flavor mixed in there. This is why this is a little bit mm, yeah, char name stuff here in printing. Like, yeah, it, I just wanted to have it disassembled. Then uh, decode um, function here getting the current 
instruction we want to disassemble and already the pointer to the instruction format. Then we, in any case, although not all instructions have these fields, I just here to have to, ha to have them around, not to open code this all over again. I just shift and end here all this S1, S2 and S3 out of the instruction, even though if they are not used, doesn't matter. It's nice to have those values at hand and also the register names, because usually these are registers unless they are not. So even if they are not, doesn't matter. We just look up the name and we might later use this name or not. Doesn't really matter. Just five instruction cycles wasted there. Does totally not matter for our toy disassembler here anyway. So if this instruction does exist, if, if it doesn't exist because we didn't type it in the table, we print out the not yet implemented something. Otherwise, we just switch here the format, integer, store load, sort, load immediate, spree branch jump and again default although it shouldn't happen but default not yet implemented format and then we just pretty print out here the individual formats of what we already looked up here the registers that is why we looked them up all we don't need to do this all over again even if it's not used like for example here then it doesn't hurt and um, then the main function is just opening the file hard coded for more for now doesn't matter and then reading it four bytes at a time for the 32-bit. Again, this is Big Endian, so Big Endian 32 to host because uh, old-fashioned C stuff. Then here's the opcode, um, the first, or the, the most significant, the first, most, well, not really the first, but anyway, the first from the left, most significant bits are the opcode, and then we call the decode for all this opcodes with the instruction pointer that we look up. So we look up here the opcode to the instruction pointer and we pass it. Just doesn't matter. We could have done it there. It doesn't really matter. It will surprise you maybe that the whole disassembler, well, yes, it is quick and dirty. Yeah, also, I should maybe have used VI. Also, it is hot and I'm tired. I actually didn't sleep last night, but whatever. And um, so the whole disassembler, yes, this is a toy disassembler. This is just a Sudoku quiz puzzle of the afternoon. 316 lines, even with pretty printing of registers and uh, the table of all the instructions. Um, fun stuff, in my opinion. I really like such projects. And then what is better to run it on the firmware? So we run this here on uh, the small stuff. I don't bother with, with Cargo or CMake or Ninja or... Manson, I just GCC this one file. If it builds, run it on the data. The data, of course, is this binary hex dumped read elf stuff there from the firmware and voila, we have a full disassembly of our rendition verity. Um, microcode, this should be mostly fine, I think. I have done one optimization so that the knobs look nice otherwise these knobs would have all looked like at immediate this is why i had here this special case of if the instruction is zero is, is completely zero that would be at immediate with zero register to zero register with a zero um, as we can confirm here this is zero is at immediate one small hard coding there for a little bit of making this much nicer to look at. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty nice. You see here, for example, end vector scalar register 136. And then this register uh, 8, this H0 mask here, this very special constant to some FIFO register. And we could actually look up, so this should be the first instruction. We could actually pinpoint this with our symbol map. This is um, going to where our symbol table, so this undefined what? Maybe this is dispatch memory flush, I guess, maybe. And yeah, the next step would then, although does this offset really offset? Zero, hmm, not really sure though how sorted is this. Anyway, you get the idea. The next step would also be the next fun traveling airplane beach Zodoku fun episode would be to also write my own elf. 
uh, magic loader stuff here for the elf structures because then I could fully integrate this with this disassembly and directly match here these addresses with the symbol names. That would be the next fun step. Hey, cool, we have comments in the audience. That is amazing. Um, I think that is mostly that. Then I take a look on the comments. And yeah, so this is not sure if someone ever has done this. No idea if the people back in the day with the X driver had the specification. Though, of course, people like ID Software or their partners had the specification, I guess. So certainly people worked with this assembler here for the Rendition Verity GPU in the 90s. Not really sure if this Windows 2D also used in the Xorg driver microcode was ever disassembled. I have no idea if someone made the efforts for this. But certainly I find this kind of stuff really fun. There you see certainly a lot of times it also makes sense. Um, masking stuff here, multiplying um, and, and stuff. So this on the first glance I come also you see get XY, get XY. I think one for X, one for Y or something like that and and so on. And yeah, really fun stuff. Um, and what that means, so very theoretically as per the... So there, there, I think there probably never was a Mesa driver for this, I guess, not really sure. Or actually back in the day it was Utah GLX. But um, maybe there never was an open source X driver for this rendition variety. Maybe we also do this just for the fun here. Um, when I'm pensioner, then I have a driver for everything at my microkernel. And um, so yeah, for the fun we could do this. Maybe I will do the, the usual triangles and lines just for the fun of it here with this uh, silicon. If, uh, so uh, if, if this people from eBay from actually... So I, I, auctioned, I auctioned one from Greece, from uh, Athens, I think. Um, I hope they send it. You never know with international shipping. So if you watch this video, if you sold me this card, please ship it. That would be amazing because future tinkering depends on this. And um, I hope you like this. Look here, this is really in-depth. This is what I try on my channel. Really show you how this stuff works in-depth. Disassembling, uh, disassemble stuff. Look on the specification. Match this stuff here together. And uh, again, this risk code is not drawing all the pixels, it's then it's doing the setup. So for example, this, this code could do a triangle setup and maybe even theoretically, not sure if it's fast enough, but it could theoretically do um, transforms. And then, because again, it has a diagram in here somewhere. Let's quickly see if we find this here somewhere. Um, that you see the function blocks here in the function diagram, where would this have been? It's also hot today, I hear. So you see it has here also P PCI AGP bus interface, the usual stuff. Um, and here is a programmable graphics processor, which is this RISC MIPS-like processor, even with... I think the initial version didn't have IND cache. I think maybe only the version 2 had IND cache. Memory controller, RAM duck. And uh, yeah, also only, only the new version has an integrated RAM duck, I think. And uh, the first version had the usual... Uh, 18T or Brook Tree and such RAM ducks, and you have old fashioned VGA engine, triangle engine, and pixel engine. So you would only use this to drive here to pre compute and drive the pixel engine and triangle engine. And um, yeah, if you ever wondered how this microcode, what also this is, of course, not too dis uh, dissimilar. To today's NVIDIA and AMD microcode, um, they do different things. So they also in their microcodes they do power management and also um, who knows what. Um, and this is why I say NVIDIA get your stuff together. We need specifications. Otherwise, I personally I can't say and stress this often enough. I vote here with my wallet. I usually you see I unlike unless we are using this old fashioned. But even this Mac Mini here from which we are live streaming has an Intel graphics. I avoid NVIDIA like the plug and we need to call out this more often than uh, not that we need uh, specifications also for Ethernet, NICs, for network interface con con controllers, for, for basically everything. If we buy expensive hardware, we for sure should be able to understand how this uh, works also in the terms of 
Nvidia, I think by the way, AMD is not publishing all specification. Also shout out if AMD is not publishing some 2D or 3D bits or something. I heard people complaining. I should probably review this another day. Um, also, yeah, AMD really publish everything, please. So welcome everyone. Um, uh, cool that you were thinking about this GPU yesterday. So again, this is a re-recording of the live stream here out of the office with working internet. Well, sometimes working internet. <coughs> Thank you Vodafone Cable for that. But certainly better than this failing Wi-Fi. So this is why I this other live stream is unlisted simply because it was too broken. And also, yeah, also not only sorry for streaming it twice, also takes my time twice. I wish it would have been more perfect the first time. Um, where can I get this data sheet? Okay, I said this already. You can simply Google this. It was from some VGA on site. Again, I wish I would not. Uh, you should really be able to find this with Google, I think. Um, I wish I would not need to Google this. Maybe it's even this here already, the first Google hit. And um, yeah, it was also yeah, exactly this v Vogons driver stuff was probably where I got this. And some of this VGA museum sites often have specifications. So even VGA museum matrix or stuff, you find their specifications sometimes for some stuff. Um, apparently, allegedly, sometimes. Yeah, so um, I don't have this card yet and there is, unlike the Verge or the Voodoo, there is no PC emulation emulation yet. Also, by the way, if you think you want to get into something like this, um, your student or at school or something, uh, or even younger and you want to learn this, you could, for example, you don't need to always buy these cards. I found it much more easier, certainly, to develop against the PC emulation. PCM, I even found a couple of bugs there and sent Sarah Vella, or what her name precisely is, uh, some patch suggestions and my work here on YouTube with the uh, S3 uh, Verge also made PC emulator slightly better because the clipping was off by one, and, um, off by one in PC emulator and also there is no implementation of, I think, palette textured as well as 3D lines. Maybe another day also for PC emulation to implement this in S3 Verge. But I will rather do other things, but it doesn't change that maybe someday I sit here and I'm bored and I do this in PC emulator. But please, it shouldn't stop you if you want to have this fun project, just take it. Low hanging fruit, um, PC M S3 Verge 3D lines and uh, text chart triangles with palette colors is not implemented. You can certainly do this in one afternoon or a weekend. Um, that's it for this live stream. Again, I really hope I get this card. I paid it already a week ago or so. It's not yet marked as shipped. You can only keep your fingers crossed here for this eBay business. Always a little bit nah, risky. Um, leave me in the comments below what you find most interesting. Do you want to see even that I do low-level programming, bare metal low-leveling driverless here for this rendition verite. Do you want me to benchmark this card then when it arrives? I hope it does arrives. Or more microkernel or simply laptop reviews or Linux tinkering. In any case, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and uh, thanks for commenting. And again, looking forward to your comments and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams to come. And zero drop frames. Amazing stuff here, back in the office.